Right, in our previous quality of service class, we saw introduction. We just saw what is QoS. But we have not gone deep into it. Today we are going to focus on uh, types of QoS. There are various types of QoS, but there is another classification other than what you are seeing here. In, in general, when you see traffic flow, there are three different type of quality of service you can see. One is whichever the traffic comes first will be processed and forwarded first. That's first in, first out. When we don't configure any QoS, first in, first out is what we can see. As we all know that every port has got some buffer, some, some storage pipe through which the packets can queued, packets can be queued and sent one after the other. We call that as hardware queue. So whichever goes inside this queue first will be forwarded out first. It's first in, first out. And the other two I explained to you, one is called the integrated service which is also called as end-to-end -end QoS. End-to-end -end QoS. That cannot be given for every flow or every customer. Practically, end-to-end -end QoS for every single flow for every customer is not possible. For some specialized service, we can have end-to-end. -end. That is achieved through a concept called MPLS traffic engineering using RSVP. You see, MPLS traffic engineering can be done by using segment routing also, even also by using segment routing. Yeah, we are not focusing on MPLS, RSVP or segment routing using MPLS. The quality of service that we are learning here is Differentiated service, diff serve. It's not end to end, it is hop by hop. It is hop by hop quality of service. Every hop will decide on the quality of service that will be, that need to be provided, given to the traffic flow. So, <clears throat> types of QoS, when we say, So this is another type of classification and marking, traffic policing, shaping, QoS management, congestion management. Right, so policing is one type, shaping is another type. Let's see one by one. First of all, if you want to provide some special service for some traffic, we need to identify them. We need to identify for which all traffic a special service is required. We call that as classification. What is classification? Identifying. Identifying the traffic that really needs 
prioritization or reserved bandwidth is what we call it as classification. Classification, identifying, and then categorizing traffic. So you have to categorize. This is highly important. Comparatively, that one is less important. You, know, you have to categorize them. Identify, categorize the traffic. There are various types of traffics. Not all traffics are of same severity level. So we have to identify them first and then categorize them The categorization or identification can be based on the IP address of the traffic, the source IP address, or even the destination IP address can be used to identify traffic. Or sometimes IP address may keep changing. You may need to match with a port number. We don't know who is going to do SSH, but all SSH traffic should be prioritized, which means I have to match the port number 23. Can also be used, app, app ID can also be used to identify app ID. There's nothing but application ID. So there will be some sort of fingerprints unique for every app. For every app, there will be a unique fingerprint. There will be unique fingerprint called app ID. So you can also identify a traffic, identify or classify some traffic based on App that generates the app that generates the traffic application type app ID fingerprint of the app. See, you don't need to worry too much about app ID. You are not a developer, you are not working with any application. If you're a network engineer, why you worry about something which you don't understand? People who teach, they will speak all rubbish, whatever they know. App ID, elephant ID, buffalo ID. We are not behind buffaloes and elephants. Why you need to worry about that? So don't worry. We know port number. We know IP address. Focus on that. You know. There should be some identification to differentiate the traffic. It can be IP address, it can be port number, it can be an application. Or there may be some other thing also. You know, but what we understand as a network guy, we understand what is port number, we understand what is ether type, we understand what is IP address. Right. The reason why I have used that application type here when I am not focused on it is because there may be some firewall engineers who works in Palo firewalls and here in um, Fortigate firewalls. There they use the term app ID, app ID. Simply they will say app ID and they won't go and describe what is app ID. That also needs quality of service. You see those traffic that coming from some application also. So I have mentioned this app types, application types here. So you can use any ID. You can use maybe other things like uh, URL categories. Can be anything to match. 
depending on which device you are working on. If you are working on the security device, URL filtering, app ID, all this come in picture. But we are not focusing on uh, firewall here. A data center device, a service provider device, an enterprises device. This is what we are focused on. In here, data center, we only match traffic base based on the IP address, port number. In SAN world, we will be matching with FCIDs or WWN address. Okay, coming to the IP world, we need a protocol name or a port number or an IP address to identify, classify. After classifying, we have to provide some we have to provide some ID value in order to categorize it. So in order to categorize, we have different IDs like IP precedence can be given as an ID. This ID will have some with high, high severity level, some with low severity level. For example, in IP precedence, number seven has got high weightage than number five. That is what we need to attach to the classified traffic. IP precedence values are well understood by the routers and switches. They understand what does what does IP precedent seven means and what does IP precedent five means. They understand it very well. So we understand we we mark the classified traffic with the language that router and switch understands, so that the router will know how important the traffic is. That's what marking is. Marking is nothing but a language which the router and switch understands to know the importance of the traffic. IP precedence is one way of marking layer three packets. DSCP is another way. Differentiated service code point is another way of marking layer three packets. You can also set directly the priority. Anyway, DSCP is also going to say <coughs> how much important it is, how much prioritized it is. IP president, DSCP. There is also layer two marking called COS. COS. Not QOS. In QOS, layer two, QOS is marked using C COS class of service. COS is class of service, which is a layer two quality of service. Marking is assigning a priority level using COS or DSCP or IP precedence to those traffics, to those packets of traffic which are classified. So the classification is the very first thing that we have to do, followed by we need to set the priority level, which is called as marking. Setting priority level is what called as marking. Saying how important it is, is what called as marking. Now, these are the two terms that I should know to do quality of service. One is traffic policing, another one is traffic shaping. 
traffic policing and traffic shaping. What is traffic policing and when do we use it? And where do we use it? Traffic shaping, what it is? When do we use it? Where do we use it? You see, both traffic policing and shaping comes into picture when uh, where congestion happens. Very important. Only during the congestion time, only during the congestion time, whenever there is a congestion, only during the congestion time, any one of this action can be taken. Either action can be traffic policing or traffic shaping. Only when congestion happens. I always leave it free. We don't go and unnecessarily disturb the traffic when you have enough bandwidth, when traffic is flowing peacefully. When traffic is normal, when the flow of traffic is peaceful, normal, why to do shaping and policing? What is policing? What is shaping? Traffic policing is when there is a high volume of traffic, more than the limit, more than the limit. The volume of traffic is more than the level that it's supposed to be. When it exceeds the committed bandwidth, when it exceeds the committed threshold, traffic policing is going to drop the packet. Yeah, this is wrongly written here. So when there is an excess, when the flow of data exceeds the threshold value, those exceeding traffic, those excess, if it is dropped, then it is called as traffic policy. See? Whenever we say excess, immediately my mind goes to excess baggage. In some flights, you know, they won't allow excess baggage. Even if you pay extra money, they say, no, 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 it's fully packed. Usually for excess baggage for every kg, there will be some fees, depending on, depends on which carrier you are taking, where you are going, all those things. Let's say you are supposed to carry 60 kilo, but you are carrying 100 kg. What will happen to that excess 40 kg? If they say, no, we cannot take, then it is traffic policing. You cannot take, sorry, you have to throw it in the... Or whatever you want to do, you do, but inside the flight, we don't allow more than 60. Which means they are doing policing job, traffic policing. What is traffic shaping? They say, okay, no problem. 
you want to carry all 100 kg fine okay you just take the 40 kg in a different bag we will send it to you in another flight not in the same flight we'll send it to you in another flight maybe through cargo flight and this is the excess money that you need to pay for excess baggage for 40 kg you pay 4000 rupees so we will send you through another cargo flight or some other flight which comes next to the same location somehow it will reach your home you just give the home address and go the 60 kg you can carry along with you, you can do check-in baggage and then you can take it from the belt and you go home with the 60 kg in the destination country but the remaining 40 you cannot carry with you we will deliver in home only don't worry it may come next day or three days later or two days later it will come for sure but it cannot come with you priority level is decreased now you see that 40 kg is not getting that priority now it is not getting the same priority what that 60 kg has got this 40 kg is delayed this 40 kg is now sending them at the regulated rate meaning what you said different priority level now for the 40 kg okay it will not go in this flight this will go in tomorrow morning that particular flight now internally you decide that and you send that baggage excess 40 kg baggage to that another flight which is going to take off tomorrow it has got now what low priority only the first 60 kg has got a high priority to come with you this is what called a shaping see they are not denying the excess luggage they're not saying you have to drop it like a traffic policing. They say, hey, you can carry 100 kg, no problem. You just pay this amount and wait for one or two days after you reach your hotel or your destination, friend's house or your own house in different country. It will reach you in your doorstep. That is what we do in traffic shaping because of the excess the packets are not getting dropped the packets are now placed in a low priority queue the excess packet to avoid the congestion to avoid the burst of traffic to smoothening it those excess packets are remarked. What is remarking? Earlier it was high priority marking. Now you remark it to low priority and send them according to the remark that you have done. Send them at the regulated rate. Earlier the priority was 7, but you gave 7 only for 60, 60 kg of traffic. Remaining 40 kg, you are giving 4 as the priority. This is the regulated rate now. For 4 priority, whatever the queue that need to be placed will be placed so that this 60 kg will be having a smooth experience. Congestion cannot disturb that 60 kg. They are committed. This is what we call as traffic shipping. Traffic policing, traffic shipping. Another example. If you are committed 100 meg bandwidth, 
you are a customer you are supposed to send only 100 me so you you put a qis here saying high priority queue 100 meg low priority queue 40 meg so if if there is too much of traffic to send only 100 meg will be going in the high priority queue the remaining traffic will go in this low priority queue Whichever the traffic that is hitting this queue will be served first. And then only this one. So here, you are able to send excess, but you are not sending 140 meg. You are only sending 100 meg at a given time. When there is excess coming, at you, you immediately put in another queue for holding the traffic. If you send to excess, this ISP guy will do what? Policing. He will drop. So to avoid dropping, what do you do? You ship. You send only the 100 meg and remaining excess amount, you put it in another queue so that it will wait in a queue instead of getting dropped. Instead of getting dropped, it will be waiting and then sent so that there won't be burst there will be smoothening yeah so ISPs that's what policing we do what we do shaping before sending it If you shape and send, on the policing side, your packet will not get dropped. They have nothing to drop. When you don't shape, then only policing happens on the service provider side. So what we have seen is, we have to first classify and then mark. In the marking, you said weightage. According to the weightage, now, when there is a congestion, whether to shape or whether to police decision is made depending on what you have configured if you configure policing then excess will be dropped if you have done shaping excess will be remarked so that it can be kept in a queue instead of dropping a low priority queue instead of dropping it That's traffic shaping. Okay, queue management. There are various type of queues. You see, we have different weightage. We have different weightage. Based on the weightage, the queue will be created and Traffic with high weightage will be placed in the high priority queue. Low priority traffic will be kept in low priority queue and so on. So queue management is managing how the packets are queued and processed. Often involving mechanisms like weighted fair queue. So this is one type of queuing mechanism. Based on the weightage, queues are created and forward. See, it's a fair queue, meaning what is fair? That is what fair. Fair. All traffic needs to be given attention. Not only one particular traffic, more priority, no. 
all traffics are important maybe one has got more importance than the other that is there but still it is not only the high priority always served and the others are always suffering that's not correct it's not always the high priority always its service and the others keep waiting 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 for long how long say for example in a flight you have 10 first class seats first class seats are only 10 and there are 260 economy class now if they say only if all 10 first class get boarded we will start the boarding for economy class will that be fair no that is not fair you see this fellow in the first class what we do if we have a first class ticket we go stay to lunch and we eat everything in the lounge we take nice rest even sometime we take shower in lounge and then we only go to the gate just two three four minutes before or 10 minutes before the take off until the last call we enjoy the lounge food everything there now will any economic class guy accept it no to so 300 260 people they can bring down the whole airport down 260 is not a small number so though they call the first class passengers to board first they don't keep waiting for all 10 to come they wait for a few minutes and then whoever they are present at, at at the time they allow them to board first after that they open the economic class and the business class and followed by economic class that's a fair one okay though you have given importance for the first class and business class but at the same time you also showed some fairness to the economic class also waited fair queuing because i have have been in all three classes i am very normal but on those days when i was going only in economic class I used to get angry like anything. What are these fellows are doing? These fellows making us to wait. How long we'll wait with this bag in the queue? But whenever I started moving into this first class and business class, then I understood. Okay, man's life is up and down. One day you were there. Now you are here. tomorrow you will be there it is okay today we got an opportunity to get in without waiting tomorrow we will wait no problem it's the same person who was there in the luxury seat now he is in the economic seat tomorrow i get another turn that's it see we are ready to i come i join with any a company with any class as we grow older both mentally and physically but youngsters are not like that hey, i have purchased the first class ticket i need the service now how dare you send the economic class side when i am still standing that is silly boys small boys <laughs> that small boys attitude now so wait a is matters of course you know when they see a first class person though he's coming late if he is there with a tag first class in his 
and baggage. They immediately call him friend because he has got the weightage. That is what exactly here happens. Even though you are going to do fair queuing, even though you are going to allow everyone to be served, but when you see the high weightage comes, you hold the low weightage for some time and say, hey, high weightage queue, now you pass through. Quick, quick, really quick. And then you allow the other queues, one after the other, depending on the weightage. But you're not holding the low weightage for a long time for all the 10 people to board. You just allow. And then when first class people come, you, you stop the boarding process for economic for, for a while and then take this guy in and then you continue again with the economic class. That is what weighted fair queue. Now they have come with another option. What is that? Boarding process. Three boarding pro three boarding queues will be there. And then there will be three different entrants to get into the flight. One entrance is for the first class and the business class only. So when you get into that queue, you will have a separate tunnel that takes you to the flight, takes you into the flight. Inside that tunnel, there's no chance of economic class to come in. They have two different tunnels now, sometimes three tunnels, depending on the size of the flight. If you have Boeing, uh, I think, what is it, 300, there's a double deck then you will have three tunnels. Now, economic class is getting boarded parallelly, parallelly. The first class and business class is also getting boarded. But the difference is no congestion, much congestion in the tunnel where the business and first class get in what maximum 25 people will be there for first class and business class whereas for economic class you have more than 270 passengers to board yes. but the good news is without any disturbance the first class and business class keep going because no way economic class people come into the tunnel. So no disturbance. That is what called as LLQ. Low latency queuing. Low latency queuing is you put one tunnel saying this tunnel will always be waiting for the high weightage like voice, multicast, streaming traffic alone. No one else can use the tunnel. And then you will have multiple other tunnels for other classes. That is what called as LLQ. LLQ is nothing but you have one priority queuing. You have one PQ. You have one priority queuing where the first class and business class go, no economic class can enter. And there is another one or two or more queues called class-based weighted fare queue, CBWFQ. So CBF, CBWFQ and PQ, priority queue, is what together called as low latency queuing. You see, in weighted fair queue, a 
according to the weightage, some traffic will go inside this queue, some traffic goes inside this queue, some traffic goes inside the queue. This traffic of weightage seven, six, five, let's say. What is weighted fair queue? First, you give importance to this guy. Let all the traffic inside go out. All. It should be empty. Only then, this six tunnel can be sending. Only when all six traffic gone out, the traffic with five can use it. So, there will be a lot of wait time in five and six. And then it comes in round robin. Again, sometime, you know, when five is still going, sending it, the seven has to wait. That is weighted fair queue. So later came the class-based weighted fair queue. In class-based weighted fair queue, what they did is, A, if Q number seven is empty, or if Q number seven have sent already 100 meg, then you stop sending those guys. Already 100 meg is sent. Let this guy send a 75 meg at least. After that, you stop. Stop him. Send this guy 25 meg. And then again, go round robin. Another 100 meg, another 75 meg, another 25 meg. That is what class-based weighted fair queue, according to the classification. Now, what is LLQ? You put another queue on top of all these queue, and the, in this queue, no one stops at any point of time. This will be always sent without stopping. So you have a big interface. In that physical interface also, there is a reservation for PQ. And no circumstances, the traffic that is supposed to go inside will be stopped here. But this one will be stopped after 100 meg. This one will be stopped after 75 meg. This one will be stopped after 25 meg. And then again goes in round robin. But the PQ tunnel, no one stops at no point. Whatever traffic that, that is placed inside will be always, at any point of time, will be always served without any stopping. No stopping. Because there's a dedicated amount of bandwidth always waiting for uh, those traffics that are supposed to go inside the tunnel. No one else can use, no other traffics can use that bandwidth. So dedicating a bandwidth, it's not shared bandwidth, it's a dedicated bandwidth. That is what we call this PQ, priority queuing. Whereas this one is not dedicated, they are shared. When, when, this, when this queue members are using this service, these queue members need to wait. And when this guy finish 100 meg, then this guy can use that same resource up to 75 meg. And this guy can use up to 25 meg. It's a shared resource. This is what we call it as this class-based weighted fair queue along with PQ. This is class-based weighted fair queue. This is PQ. Together is what called as LLQ, low latency queuing. All right. So you can see LLQ and class based weighted fair queue in most of the production places. <laughs> okay. 
Weighted fair Q is, did you understand the difference between weighted fair Q and class-based weighted fair Q? You see, weighted fair Q, there is no real meaning. I'll, I'll repeat the story again. Weighted fair Q is like, because they all got the first class ticket, let all of them get boarded first. All 10 of them. Because they got weight. More weightage because they got more weightage because they have paid extra money. They should get that service because they have paid extra. They they are privileged. They should enjoy the service for which they have paid. That is weighted fair you. If you don't give them in some airports, I have seen man. Even if you have first class, business class, they treat you the same level like economic class. Then I used to feel, why did I pay extra money? Why I paid extra money if I am bothered with all these people who paid less? I paid extra money because I am sick. I need some special attention so that I will not be getting choked by this crowd. But these guys are not providing me the service. So, giving weightage to the ticket, first class ticket, is the weighted fair queue. But problem there is, until all 10 people board, you make others to wait. Low weightage people to wait. That is not acceptable. That is why this class-based weighted fair queue, what it says, okay, according to the classification, and weightage, 100 make the one with high class, let him enjoy. Little lower class, 75 make, let him enjoy. I don't want the 75 uh, and the 25 guys to wait for a long time until all the high weightage guys board. Let me just allow 100. And make these guys wait. Who? High weightage guy to wait for some time. So that another 75 I can send from another queue. And another 25 I can send from another queue. And then I'll come back to this high priority queue and send another 100. So like a round robin. That is class based weighted fair. But that is not this. Both the techniques are not uh, not good for voice. Why? Voice traffic needs uninterpreted, interrupted, uninterrupted, without any interruption. The traffic flow. That is why to this class-based weighted fair queue, you attach another queue called PQ and put all the voice in it. So they never get stopped. These are all the three queuing mechanisms that helps to manage the packets that are placed inside the queue. Any question? Hmm. What is the difference between WFQ and FIFO? No, FIFO is first in, first out. There is no my, uh, queue. There is only one hardware queue. This is weighted fair queue. You have many queues, but the other queues are saved only after the high priority queue get empty. Okay, FIFO is no queues, only one default hardware queue. Whereas here, according to weightage, you got many queues, but the high priority queue should be empty for the low priority queue to go. That's a problem. Yeah, there's only hardware queue. 
there is no software queue there is no we we don't create any queue there it's it's the default queue there all right what is congestion management technique to manage and avoid congestion ensuring high priority traffic is transmitted preferably hmm. what is congestion management see congestion can be managed by dropping some traffic or by slowing down some traffic if everyone want to go always without slowing down congestion will be always there you see in uh, this country india everyone want to go everyone want to go the brain never go the brain is stuck when they drive the vehicle wants to go they don't see hey if i also go if he also go if she also go no one can go let me at least stop those two dumb guys let them go at least let me stop to avoid congestion or let me slow down instead of speeding up with them let me slow down But let me go have some coffee for some time. Let all the crowd go, and then I will go home. Don't don't take the decision. Then he will not go home before eleven o'clock in the night. That is India. No, that's not an option. At least you know, fine in the junction. Okay, let me stop for a while. Let them go. Funny guys. Let them go. Maybe they want to go hospital. Let them go. That is how we can avoid congestion. let the high priority traffic go first i am not a high priority traffic it's okay man i have enough time i'm going to leave on this here the long time so i have time those people don't want to leave long let them go it's okay man they are high priority traffic it's okay go that is how we can avoid congestion slowing down or stopping for some time some low priority traffic so that the high priority traffic will have enough bandwidth to pass through if all at the same time send high low and no one is going to get uh, uh, sufficient bandwidth or what we can do we can do some link efficiency like what aggregate some link increase the bandwidth by aggregating like lcp or <coughs> or change the speed of the port and the wire or upgrade the device hardware device or <coughs> do some compression techniques do some compression techniques when it is too big it consumes too much bandwidth compression send all right so this is saying like configuration queue is on hfcl router hfcl is the made in india router but the commands are same like cisco router so what do you see is also common for cisco huawei zati routers you have a class map that's how we identify traffic you see in the class map we are matching traffic that are generated by the protocol real time protocol rtp so that is classification we have classified 
And then this is policy map. In the policy map, we can do marking or you can set some priority value. That is also kind of marking. You set priority like 1000 KBBS reservation you are doing. This is what called as priority queuing. I told you, you know, you have a queue reserved always waiting. So for all the voice traffic, RTP is voice traffic, real time protocol traffic. You are creating a tunnel which will be always waiting for voice to come. That 1000 KB will never be given to anyone else. No other traffic. So for the rest of the traffic, what you do, see class default is nothing but the other traffic. You say fair queue. You know what is fair queue. Based on the weightage they already have, they will be given different queues. One with high priority queue. But whatever high priority, it is not bigger than this priority queue. PQ is always the top. And this fair queue may create many queues below it. According to the weightage, there may be many queues. These guys will be served, wait, served, wait, served, wait in round robin. But here, no wait, only serving. So for the rest of the uh, traffic, uh, also you have queues, but these queues are not always served. When one is served, the others are waiting. That's fair queue. Whereas this one is the PQ. No traffic waits here. Whatever enters in will zoom out. No stop, no drop. Stop and drop is only here. If this queue is full, then drop will happen. Okay. So at last, you know, after um, identifying and after setting the queues, after setting that uh, weightage, after setting that uh, privileges for the traffic, you need to go apply on the interface where these queuing has to be enforced. For that, we go under the interface and say what? Service policy. And say the direction output or input. And then call this policy map. Policy map has got class map. Class map has got the identified traffic. And then for that identified traffic, policy map has got the reservation. And for other traffic, also there is another type of queuing reservation. So whenever a traffic tries to go out on this interface, according to this, the treatment is given. Not all traffics are equally treated. Right. So these are all the show commands, show policy map, interface, and then the interface name. That will show you what policy has been applied and how much traffic has been served according to the policy. Yeah. How much of traffic has been served according to the policy? You can even see how many bits of traffic was given what type of treatment very clearly. Show policy map and then the interface name. If you simply want to see the class map that you created, you type show class map, right? This is a sample configuration. This is not LLQ. This is not LLQ. LLQ is Low latency queuing is PQ. This is PQ, but this is not 
class based weighted fair q this is not class based this is simply weighted fair q this is not class based weighted you just only got only one class called default class you don't have multiple classes <clears throat> So this cannot be called as weighted fair, uh, LLQ. LLQ example comes later. This is simply one PQ and fair Q. Fair Q, you no need to say how many Qs. Depending on that flow, uh, the Qs will be created. Depending on the marking that they come with, the Qs will be created. Somewhere in the topology, some other router sets the weight and send you the packet with the marking. See, in the layer 3 header, you will have weight. In layer 2 header, also, you will have COS weight. So for, for the traffic, which is already marked on some other router that is coming in, those things come under class default. Here, we are only matching RDP real-time protocol RTP. All right. Um, see, this is another example. Sorry, this is the same example. Oh, no. Why did I put two times? It's the same example. The quality of service in layer 2 called as class of service. You know, when you have a trunk encapsulation protocol dot 1q, there is a 3 bit reservation according to dot 1p on dot 1q. Don't get confused with Q, P, and all. Only know this one trunking protocol dot one Q NF. You have three bit reservation in the encapsulation done by actually dot one Q. Don't do encapsulation. It inserts some field before sending the traffic out from the switch via the trunk port. So on that port, when the traffic comes out, it will be marked and sent using COS values. Class of service is a quality of service feature primarily used in Ethernet network to provide different type of traffic. Prioritize different type of traffic. It operates at layer two of OSI model and is particularly relevant to the environment using VLANs and dot one q tagging. Again, same story. You need to classify the traffic. That's called traffic classification. For that, we use what? Class map. And then prioritization level, that is what we will do in policy map. What we are doing, prioritizing level means what we are marking. We are we are marking the traffic with a different level so that some specific treatments according to the marking, sorry, here. Packet with a high priority marking will have high high with high level of treatment. All right. Traffic management using COS switch can VLAN interface, yes. Yeah, you can. Right. Now, traffic management using COS switches can manage prioritized traffic, ensuring that the critical applications like VOIP receives necessary bandwidth and low latency while critical traffics like file download may be deprioritized. Yes, when there is a congestion, you can deprioritize. You can you can uh, you can do what policing. That is what deprioritizing. So that the, the TCP packets can be recorded. You see, file download 
you can stop it for some time so that the voice over IP will not get disturbed. It's a high priority. That's how we manage traffic. We give importance to the high priority traffic during the congestion. And to avoid congestion, we drop those. Sorry, not to avoid, to, to manage congestion, to reduce the congestion, we drop those packets which are less important, those packets that can be recovered. So, so what about the compatibility between the interoperability between the COS and the layer 3 QoS? They are compatible. They are compatible. See, here we are seeing layer 2, two QoS. Later, we will be doing seeing some layer 3 QoS. We already saw layer 3 QoS in the previous example here. But what I'm trying to say is, what if some markings are done using COS on the switch? Will the same level of treatment be given on the router? Can we give same level of treatment on the router? Because that is layer 2 marking. Router will look only layer 3 marking. Can we match this both? Yes, it can be matched. The first three bit of DSCP and first three bit of CVS. That is how they make the compatibility. So the last point, what it should help you understand is on switch, if someone is giving one packet high priority, it is possible to give the same high priority level even on the router. You can simply map that COS to DSCP or IP precedence of same, same priority level. COS 7 and IP precedence 7 is same. IP precedence is layer 3. COS layer 2, but still the priority level is same. COS 5, IP president 5 is same. But they are in different levels. How COS works? As I said, the dot one q header will have that 3 bit COS bit where the COS value will be marked and carried and the switches when they receive the packet with the COS value they read it and they give the the weightage the privilege the the treatment according to the QoS COS marking and that marking can be used for shaping or policing if you have a congestion and packet with low marking will drop if it is policing. If it is shaping the packet to avoid congestion, the packet with high weightage will not be modified. For example, 5 will not get modified, but the packet which is marked with 2 will be modified to 1 so that that can be slowed down. And one can be dropped if it is too much congestion, but that five, four will never get dropped because for five, four to get dropped, all one, two, three should be dropped. By the time you drop all one packet, congestion is already gone. So policing is like to bring down, to bring it into control when the congestion happens, you drop the low priority packets. That is policing to bring down the congestion, to make the traffic flow normal during the congestion, you know what to drop. You don't drop the important traffic. That is what quality of service is. You drop, still you drop, but not the important traffic. The traffic with low priority only you drop. That's what called as traffic policing. Whereas traffic shaping is, you don't drop, but you slow down some traffic with the low priority and allow only the high priority to consume maximum bandwidth. 
that way you can avoid congestion at the same time you can avoid dropping all are say served but according to the priority level you see here is those three bits called priority bit the dot one q tag you see there is a three bit called 802.1p priority level bits don't focus on acp and all just only one thing you know dot one q tag only have all these things okay so three bit is the priority level so there are there are seven different uh, levels of marking like zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero one 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 seven different probability seven different type of marking seven different priority level this one has got a high weightage this one has got no weightage this is default these things can be used for marking zero to seven for example voice traffic might be marked with the cos5 to ensure that it receives high priority over a standard data Mark with CYS zero. So normal data are zero, high priorities are five. You cannot use six and seven. Six and seven are internally used for management. So out of seven, five is the highest priority. In CYS six and seven, though it is highest, it is not for us to use. It is for the uh, spanning tree protocol and all other internal management protocols. We use five, four, three, two, one for a different type of traffic. Right? So that is CVS. Now what we are going to see is layer three DSCP, layer three QS called DSCP. What we have seen is layer two. What we are going to see is layer three. You see, this DSCP differentiated service code point. This one is more bits, more granular, more prioritization options. The CYS has got only three bits, but DSCP has got six bits. With three bits, what you can do? Two to the power of three, which is eight. But six bit, it's big, two to the power of six, 64. <coughs> so you've got different, yeah. uh, <clears throat> difference in the number of bits, more the number of bits, more prioritization levels you will get. At the same time, it is also compatible with the three bit IP precedence and three bit CVS. DSCP, differentiated service code point, is the component of QS used in IP network, layer three network, to manage and prioritize network traffic. It operates at layer three of OSI and it is defined in IETF, differentiated service architecture. All right. Again, what is differentiated service per hop? Every router decides the service. Every hop decides the prioritization level. It's not end to end, it's per hop behavior. Now, we are in DiffServe. In DiffServe, DSCP is one of the Queuing mechanism, sorry, marking mechanism. Traffic is classified <clears throat> using class map. 
and you mark it with the DSCP. And the DSCP marked traffic is coming to you now. Now you match it, you classify it using DSCP. Already someone has already marked DSCP. The traffic is coming now with the different, different markings of DSCP. Now, according to the marking level, the service level also will vary. That will help the router also to identify the different service levels that are supposed to be given for the packets. As I say, this DSCP is six bit, you see. DSCP values of six bit. Six bit in the IP head. <clears throat> six bit. So you can have sixty four different code points, codes. Sixty four different codes. Each code can, can sorry. <coughs> Each code point can correspond to a specific level of service. So likewise, you can have different sixty-four levels of service for voice, for video, for best effort, like uh, UDP traffic, and then for multicast traffic, for streaming traffic, etc. Now, DSCP defines how packets should be handled at each hop in the network. For example, packet that is marked with a high DSCP value may receive preferential treatment such as expedited forwarding. What is expedited forwarding? You know, express visa, like that. If you pay some additional amount, you know, to some countries like Oman, you get express visa, the visa that is processed very fast. High treatment, expedited forwarding. Assured forwarding is also another type of forwarding, but comparatively expedited forwarding is more fast, high prioritized. Now, as I was talking about the compatibility, DSCP, IP precedence, and CVS, all three are compatible. DSCP has got backward compatibility with the older layer three marking called IP precedence. Now, the upper three bit in the DSCP will be matched with the IP precedence. That's how it is compatible. There are five, uh, six bits I told you. The upper three bit is going to be matched with IP precedence or CVS. That is how you can give compatibility. As I was telling you, the word expedited forwarding is the high prioritized, high value QS. The QS with more weightage. Is expedited forwarding. So the expedited forwarding will be EF. EF, expedited forwarding. And for expedited forwarding, the value is 4, 6. Expedited forwarding. 46. How the 46? We'll talk about that later. It's coming in the coming slides. So now <coughs> we have assured forwarding, we have expedited forwarding, in which expedited forwarding is the high priority. Other than these two, there is also a class selector. The first three bit, you know, of DSCP, which can be matched with the IP precedence. We call this class selector. For example, the three bit, if it is 
7, then it is called a CS7. And nothing but CYA is in a layer 3 level, which will only consider 3 bit out of 6. These stories, you know, packet marking, when a packet is sent from the source, they can be marked with different CSC, uh, DSCP codes. According to the code level, the treatment will be given. See, routers and switches read the DSCP code values. As the packet travels through the network, depending on the DSCP value, the device will apply different queuing and scheduling mechanism to ensure the appropriate level of services given to those traffics. QoS policy. The network administrator can configure QoS policy that, 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 that de dedicate how to handle traffic based on DSCP value. For example, voice traffic might be prioritized over. We only decide the policy. We give high priority to the voice than the normal file transfer. So we give EF to the voice and AF to the file. EF is what? Exponent forwarding. Exponent forwarding is only one value. EF 46. Whereas assured forwarding, you have many EF 11, EF 12, EF 13, EF 21, EF 22, EF 23, EF 31, EF 32, many. Many other low, medium, high priority. <laughs> Here is an example. Someone has already marked the voice traffic with EF. Now, in this router, you are matching all the packet that is coming inside. Is it inside? No, going out. The packet which is already marked as EF, before they go out, you see the EF. If you see the EF, you give a priority queue. For the rest, you give normal fair queue. For the normal fair queue, you no need to decide on the uh, bandwidth and all. Automatically, based on the weightage, queues will be dynamically created and given to different uh, level of traffic. Whereas for the voice, EF is the level, highest level, and the priority, 1000. That queue, will never slow down or stop. The priority queue of 1000 KB will be always up, only for EF marked traffics. Now, differentiated service code point is six bit, so you got different values from zero to 63. Whereas IP precedent is only three bit, you got zero to seven. IP president is old one in IP QS. DSCP is the latest one. Right. So what is the difference again? Uh, DSCP has got more granular because you got more bit. And uh, you have a special reservation called EF for uh, voice and uh, very high port and time sensitive traffic. And for the rest, you have AF. So it is more granular, more flexible. This is less flexible. All right. So compatibility is always there. Only the first three bit will be matched. Here you can see IP president is three bit, DSCP is six bit. IP president is only zero to seven. DSCP is 0 to 63. Basic prioritization. Uh -huh. Out of the uh, six bit of DSCP, if it is like this 10101, uh, this will not be considered when a router with IP precedence is enabled. IP precedence will read only this three portion. So IP, according to IP precedent, the value is five. According to DSCP, the value is, it is five and one. I'll tell you how this becomes one. It looks like two for you. I'll tell you how it is one in the next page, coming page. 
So only three bit. Okay, the flexibility is uh, it's less flexible only for basic prioritization because you got only seven different priority levels, whereas DSCP is more granular to have uh, in a power hub behavior. This is legacy mechanism. It's used in all modern networks now. Uh, this is basic DSCP compatibility, only three bits. Um, here it supports both uh, DSCP as well as IP precedence, mold and new mechanism. So, as I said, expected forwarding is the highest marking level. Designed for voice traffic, this class uh, has low risk of drop. Any packet drop marked with EF has got low risk, not IE, not medium. It is low risk, meaning it won't be getting dropped because of the highest priority. Uh, AF is nothing but assured forwarding. Uh, in that, AF41 has got high priority and AF11 has got low priority. 41 has got high priority. If no quality of service is configured, then it is called as best effort. No QS. It is default, which is FIFO. Now, this is the important page. After this, you see drop, high drop. Which one? 1, 3. Then 1, 1. Meaning, if there are some packet with 1, 3 and 1, 1, and if the router should drop some packet, which one it will drop? It will drop the packets that have got 1, 3. It won't drop 1, 1. So if I need to drop, which one to drop? Should I drop 1, 3 or 1, 1? I, sh I will drop 1, 1. Sorry, 1, 3. 1, 3. If you see in this class, within the class, bigger number will get dropped. But if you see in this, in this angle, some packets are AF41, some packets are AF31, some packets are AF21, some packets are AF11. Which one will be dropped? This will be dropped first. Still, if there is a congestion, then the packet with this will be dropped. Still, if there is a congestion, and this will never get dropped. So what I'm trying to say here is, if you see within the class, when the congestion happens, if the traffics are within the class, which one will be dropped first? This will be dropped first. But if you see across the classes, across, which will be dropped first? The one with the lower value. Yeah, well, Good. So, you see, this will get dropped first to avoid congestion, not AF21, 31, 41. Whereas in this, Vertical one, this is high drop. Fine. Now this, you, I, I hope you understood this. Now, how comes 11? This is not 11, no. This is 8 plus 2. It is only 10. Then how it is 11 here? Now you see this one. This is 32, huh? 32 plus 4 is 32 plus 4 is 36. How comes 42? Mm -hmm. Now this one you see. This is uh, 8 plus 4 plus 1, uh, 2. 8 plus 4 plus 2 is 14. Then why 13? I'm going to explain you this now. How they come up with this number. You see, out of the six bit, this last bit, if you notice, it is always zero. So don't focus on that zero. Don't focus on that zero. 
And now divide this into two portions, 3-bit and 2-bit. What? 3-bit and 2-bit. Don't consider the last one. Now, what is the value of this one? What is the value of this one? Now, what is the value of this one? What is the value of 1, 1, 3? I told you, don't consider the last bit. Now, come here. What is the value of this one? 4. What is the value of this? 2. Because don't consider last one. 4, 2. You see? This is how they named AF numbers. All right. We'll stop here. We'll again.